It's week 12 of the championship meet at Gulfstream Park, and the highlight this week was our trip to New Orleans and a visit to the Fairgrounds racetrack for their Louisiana Derby preview day, where we met Kim's parents and we got all dressed up for the day. We had a great adventure in New Orleans, but let's take a look at how the racing went on this short racing week, just four days, Thursday through Sunday. On Thursday, February the 19th, the first score of the week came in the fourth race. It was a maiden special weight for three-year-olds. I like number four, Royal Squeeze. He's making his sixth career start today, but turned back from a mile and a sixteenth to seven furlongs. Was sent off as the four to five favorite. Press three wide. Tiger of Wales, turn. fourth on the far outside. Into the final furlong, Royal Squeeze, a bounding legacy. These two match strides, a bounding legacy's in front. A bounding legacy, and Royal Squeeze back into second, but fighting on. A bounding legacy, Royal Squeeze coming back. These two down to the line together, Royal Squeeze. Tripled the bet on that one, got back nearly $30. I came right back to score in my best bet of the day. It was in the fifth. It was the Gulfstream 40% club play. On the turf, a starter optional claimer. I like number three, Wild Suava. Wild Suava was sent out by Michael Maker today, had Javier Castellano press the pace into the far turn. As they come to the top of the stretch, Wild Suava has taken the lead. Spectacular me gets going on the outside. She's a heartbreaker. Miss Taffet is fourth. Final furlong. Wild Suava's got the lead from Spectacular me. Wild Suava and Javier Castellao with plenty left in the tank, and they're going to win by two. Spectacular me was second. And, and he got back another $25. I finished off the first racing day of the week with my third win of the day in the eighth race, number eight hereditary, in a maiden special weight going a one turn mile. I thought this horse had a huge edge over the field because in his last start at Laurel Park, he won a maiden special weight, but he got DQ'd in spite of being open lanes in front on the wire. Today he came back with Javier Castellano for the legendary FIP stable and hollow trainer Shug McGahee is sent off at 6 to 5, which I thought was more than generous. Have a good laugh, digs in, chivalrous hereditary on the outside. Behind them, sudden urges, then Dane's pulpit, hereditary now to the front. Javier Castellano and hereditary have taken the lead. Have a good laugh on the inside second. Hereditary comes home a winner. On Friday, February the 20th, I made my bets early in the day. We took off for New Orleans and landed there around 5, went on a ghost tour, and when we came back to our bed and breakfast, I was able to hook up to the internet and watch the replays, and I had two winners on the Gulfstream card. First came in the opener, a non-winner of three lifetimes, sprinting six furlongs. I like number five, Passkey. He'd beaten five of the last seven rivals in this field and I thought the fact that he's lightly raced might just mean that he could come right back and do it again. He rallied four wide into the stretch. It was a stretch And right duel. behind them as they come into the final furlong is Bright Guy. Down to the last furlong, Donegal Hall. Here's Passkey. Passkey on the outside. Donegal Hall digs in. Down to these two. Donegal Hall. Passkey. Passkey. Donegal Hall. These two down to the line. Passkey. Paid a generous $7.60 and I got back nearly $20. My second and final win of the day came in my best bet of the day. It was the seventh, going seven and a half furlongs on the turf. A non-winners of three claiming event, Honor the Kitten, sent out by Michael Maker for the Ramses with Javier Castellano. Went off at even Run them down, they're into the stretch. Tail of the Heart is in front. On the far outside, Honor the Kitten is closing in now. Tail of the Heart, Honor the Kitten's coming, and so too Sneaky Kitten. But here's Honor the Kitten. Honor the Kitten and a patient Javier Castellano. Oh, yeah, that was nice. Paid $4. I collected $30 on the day. And then Saturday, we were out at the track at the fairgrounds.
The day started out, I thought I was going to have a big day as the opener at Gulfstream Park was a non-winners of one allowance and again it was Castellano, again for Michael Maker. I thought Empire Knight would be an obvious 6-5 to five or even money favorite, but instead was 2-1 to one as they turned from home. Split After these horses. front runners, Cool Boy just a narrow lead. Here comes Town Extension on the far outside. Empire Knight goes with him, and right in between horses is Downey Gap. They're into the stretch. Town Extension, Downey Gap on the inside. Empire Knight between those two, these three. Into the final furlong, Empire Knight pokes ahead in front. Town extension to the outside second. Los Barachos coming late in the center of the course. Then it's Downey Gap, and they're coming to the line. And Empire Knight will Six win. Sixty, got that thirty-three dollars to kick off the day. Woo, that's nice. In the seventh race at Gulfstream, I really liked Good Deed in the ladies' turf sprint. She won back to back. Big efforts at the fairgrounds sprinting and she just laid over this field. She was a front runner or a pace presser and as number three good deed broke out of the They're game. racing in the ladies turf sprint. Zam quick on the far outside out sharply. Oh. And then as she went through the turn, looked to be making Favorite a move. good deed. Hard held here about seven lengths off the lead moving for the turn and will need a little bit of running room as they go into oh, that turn. Again with the trouble. But she came flying up the rail, and the leader was... It is Jewel up. of a Cat. Good Deed is flying. Good Deed is now rallying up into second and coming up the rail. And here comes Good Deed now. And Good Deed on the inside, and on the outside, Jewel of a Cat. Photo finish! Second. Oh, man, if I had any kind of luck but bad luck, I'd be a winner. In the ninth race today at Gulfstream, it was the Grade 3 Mac Deer Mita, and it was my best bet of the day at either track. I told Kim as I went in to watch the race, I'll know what kind of karma I have because my top pick was number one main sequence. All he'd done was since he came to North America last summer, he'd won not one, not two, not three, but four Grade 1 events, including the Breeders' Cup Turf. And he was the older horse of the year, and he was the turf horse of the year. His main rival was Twilight Eclipse, who he'd beaten not once, twice, three, but four times in a row, every time. And Twilight Eclipse, even though he had Javier Castellano on board, was going for a trainer that was 0 for 50. Certainly, I can win this race. Main sequence was saving ground through the back stretch, into the turn, as they turn for home, Twilight Eclipse is on the lead, and I thought he's got too much Here's to do. main sequence, four wide, and here he comes now, as they move to the top of the stretch, Twilight Eclipse takes on change of command, main sequence is in the middle of the course, but he's got work to do, Twilight Eclipse is the leader, main sequence is coming, change of command's on the rail, it's Twilight Eclipse, and here comes main sequence, oh, and he just runs right on by, and a champion returns in glory. Clear me to the bet of the day, main sequence. Devastating late kick. Give me my first stakes win of the day. Woohoo! Wow, that was a devastating kick. Woo! And I got my best bet of the day. So at least I can feel good about that. But then the two races that were the story of the day came in the featured Grade 2 Fountain of Youth. I like number 7, Upstart. I made him a prime time And they're play. into the stretch, and Frosted turns for home in front, but now Upstart is even closer, and he edges up alongside, and it's a knockout is coming too! And suddenly it's these two that have taken over. Upstart, and it's a knockout have gone by Frosted. It is Upstart, it's a knockout, just steady late. It's going to be Upstart again! Oh yeah, it's a winner, but wait a minute, inquiry and objection. Now you watch this. I thought that yeah, there was bumping, but it was caused by Frosted. And by the time It's a Knockout had to take up, if you look at the head-on view, it looks worse than the side view when Ipstart was already clearly by him. But 
no, they disqualified him. I just, I couldn't believe it. But then I thought it was racing karma. In the final race of the day, a maiden special for three-year-olds, I had number seven, Dreaming of Gold. Dreaming of Gold, bold move under Javier Castellano on the far And they're turn. coming to the top of the stretch, and it's wide open here. Animal Cracker, Danish Dynaformer on the outside, Dreaming of Gold. These three now, Danish Dynaformer, Dreaming of Gold, Animal Cracker on the inside, Dreaming of Gold, Dreaming of Gold on the outside, Danish Dynaformer fights on. These two, Danish Dynaformer. Oh, second, but wait, inquiry, objection. When I saw it, I said out loud, wow, because not once, but twice he gets slammed. Oh, and they let the results stand. Unbelievable. The last day of the racing week came on Sunday, February the 22nd. While we were in New Orleans, we took a city tour. Where Kim and I had lunch at Frank's, shared New Orleans traditions, muffalettas, and a hurricane. And then we went on a Bayou Swamp tour where we saw lots of gators and actually got to hold a gator. When we got back, I was very anxious to see how the racing turned out because my bet of the day, I put as much money on this horse as I had on main sequence, and that came in the fifth race, Kozan for Todd Pletcher. He debuted from post 14 and was my bet that day, and he scored impressively, and I thought, this guy, a half-brother to stakes winner and champion Royal Delta, might be a derby horse. Sure enough, today he went off at odds on, I had 50 to win on number three, Kozan under control into the turn and then Javier Three quarters go. in 111 and 2 and they're into the stretch and Kozan is pulling away. It is Kozan by five with a furlong to run. Big family and global positioning battling for second but it's a one horse race and look at him go. Kozan another outstanding performance. He won it easily. I scored again in the 8th race when I like Todd Pletcher's It's Only Acting Dad. You may remember It's Only Acting Dad from about a month ago when I had him at 9-1 to one for Todd Pletcher on the turf and he lost by the narrowest of noses. Today I thought he'd be certain to go off as the favorite, but instead he went off at 7-2. to two. John Velasquez had him press the pace. And they're into the stretch. It's only acting dad outside of my Celeste. Right decision tries to run them down. Into the final furlong. It's only acting dad gets away. On the outside, right decision. Giant crystal and finishing well is Bishop's Pond on the outside with Sebal. But it's only acting dad wins it. Oh, yeah. I paid nine twenty. Get back almost $50. I'm a winner on the day. Then I added to the totals when in the last race of the day, the 12th race, we were back on the turf again. We were going eight and a half furlongs in a claiming event. I like number two, Perfect Tay. Two back, Perfect Tay had scored at this price, but it was in three lifetime company. Last out an open company, he rallied for third. Today, big rally on the far turn wide into perfect the tay and kitten and may got caught in tight quarters there and had to steady perfect tay in front inside it's whisper on the wind kitten and may trying to get reinvolved on the outside it's going to be perfect tay over kitten in may oh and in a generous 11.40 whoo that's nice scored for almost 30 dollars so in spite of going 2 for 12 at Gulfstream on Saturday, I still came out 31% for the week. That's pretty good. I'll take that. This week there are three graded stakes on the weekend, and my mom will be with me as we head out to Gulfstream for week 13 of the championship meet.